Hi, welcome to Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. I'm an Allied Guardian tank, and these prats and I are here to tell you about how we think you should be doing your job. Sir. Yes, we've temporarily called the truce to make sure you do not send us to our desk needlessly. To begin with, we will tell you how to move your viewpoint around the battlefield and how to command your units, including the best ones, such as me, the Soviet Hammer Tank. Just look at this body compared with the teeny little Japanese tank to my left. Shut up! Ow! Please excuse him, sir. Let us begin. Oh, blimey. Right, okay. To move your camera around the battlefield, just hold down the right mouse button and slide your mouse around. Try moving your camera now. You may also move your cursor to the far edges of the screen. Easy enough. Now, to rotate the camera, hold down the middle mouse button and move the mouse around. Try rotating your camera now. To zoom the camera in and out, simply slide your mouse wheel. Try zooming your camera now. As you go about fussing with the camera, sir, remember you can always click the middle mouse button to reset the viewing angle. My goodness, Commander. You have completed your first objective. <laughs> right proper, you have. Objectives, as you might have surmised, are special goals you need to accomplish in order to progress through the campaigns. In general, objectives will be labeled using special markers out on the battlefield. Follow the on-screen indicators to get to them. If at any time you're not sure what the blazes you're supposed to be doing, hit the escape key to pay a visit to the mission menu. It'll list all your current objectives. Good. Now that you have an idea for how to move around the battlefield, let's move on to controlling your units. Here come some of our hated enemies now. Right, to select a unit, just left-click on it. Try selecting one of these allied peacekeepers. Nice. He's definitely one of ours, sir. You may also hold down the left mouse button and drag your mouse. This will create a selection box. Any units inside the selection box will be selected. And if you want more units added to your selection, hold down the shift key and drag a selection box around those units. Okay. Now that we've reminded you how to select units, you'll need to move them around the battlefield. Ow! On point. I was getting to that. <clears throat> to move your units, whilst having them selected, click the right mouse button on any open terrain. Try moving your units to the designated area up ahead. Confirmed. That's affirmative. Affirmative. 10-4, sir. That's affirmative. See? They obey you without question. He noticed, Commander, how the darkened area of the battlefield revealed itself as your forces drew near. This darkened area is the fog of war and represents parts of the battlefield that may be hiding enemy troop movements. Be careful when venturing into unseen areas and use your scouts to survey the terrain before committing your forces. Now, up ahead are some dummy targets that you are going to destroy. They resemble real-life Soviet conscripts, but I assure you they are merely robots we created for this exercise. See how foolishly they behave? They seem so real. Observe that you can distinguish your forces from the robots based on the colored blips in the radar in the upper right corner of your battlefield control display. The color of the blips refers to the color of the different sides involved in a battle. If you encounter different colored blips as you clear the fog of war, those are likely enemy forces, so be prepared. Um, right. So, to issue an attack order to your units, whilst having them selected, put your cursor over a target and click the right mouse button. Notice that as you move your mouse cursor over those dummies, it changes to an attack cursor. Unlearned. Destroy all the target dummies in the area. area. Securing area. Who's next? 
Keeping the peace. So long, you stupid robot. Bloody robots. Now, in addition to issuing attack commands on specific targets, you can have your units move and attack any enemies along the way. To issue an attack move command while having your unit selected, just press the A key and the right click on any open terrain. You can issue attack move orders on the radar as well. Now look there. We need you to lead us to that strategic point, yet many robots stand in the way. If you please, issue an attack move order to strategic point. You have the command. Lead us to victory! Arm response. Securing building. What do you say? Hey, come here! Tactical unit. Board and cover. That's a fine job you did there, Commander. You now know how to move around the battlefield, as well as how to make your forces shoot their enemies dead. Indeed. We suggest you move on to the next lesson on building a military base for further instruction on properly commanding an army. See you there. Mission accomplished. Good to have you, Commander. In this mission, we'll be reminding you all about constructing a base for each of the factions. We'll start with the Allies, for obvious reasons. First things first, though. On the right side of the screen is the sidebar, which is where you manage all your base construction and unit production. Here we have one of the hated Allied mobile construction vehicles. The MCV will unpack into a construction yard. To unpack it, select it, then click on its special ability button at the bottom right of your screen. Go on, don't be shy. Observe the ghosted image of the construction yard attached to your cursor. Now left click anywhere on open terrain to open your MCV to unpack at that location. Ready for installation. Very fancy, no? Best remember to use the F hotkey as a shortcut to your unit's special abilities. In general, special abilities are executed with the left mouse button, or cancelled with the right mouse button. However, the right mouse button is used for basic orders. Bear in mind that there may be impassable areas of the map where you're not allowed to place down your structures. When you try to place a structure down over impassable or unbuildable terrain, red cells will appear on the build grid indicating that you're unable to place a structure there. Now that your MCV has unpacked into a construction yard, you should have some new construction options available to you. To access your production structure's build queue, select the con yard or click on the production tab that's flashing. Whoa, look at what we have here. Looks like you have access to build a power plant. 
Ow! Don't overdo it. Commander, select the power plant button to begin building it. All allied structures build over time inside the construction yard. Once they're ready, you'll be able to place them on the battlefield right away. Your power plant is now ready to be placed. Simply left-click on its button and move your mouse over open terrain. Then left-click on an open spot on the terrain. That's the way. As the name suggests, a power plant provides your base with power. All your structures, with the exception of your power plant and construction yard, use power. You can tell how much power you've got to spare by glancing at the power meter next to your radar. It's important to understand the consequences of a low power situation. While in low power, your units and structures will build at a reduced speed, and your base defenses won't work. So it's always good to have plenty of power as you build up. The next thing you'll need to get base humming along is an ore refinery. This structure comes with a free prospector vehicle, which will collect ore from that nearby ore mine. To build your ore refinery, select the production tab and select the ore refinery button, just as you did with the power plant. Bear in mind that a single ore refinery likely will not be enough to fund your military escapades. Try to build an ore refinery next to each ore mine near your base, but be careful to defend them. Now that construction is complete, click the ore refinery button and consider where to place it on the battlefield. While you're able to place your refinery anywhere on open terrain, the optimal location is just in front of an ore mine. You'll see those spots ghosted on the terrain. As you move your cursor over those spots, your structure preview should snap to the optimal position. Then, just click to place your ore refinery, and you're set. Hey, properly executed. When you place your ore refinery, you get a prospector as part of the deal, and he'll go about collecting ore for you automatically. Pro tip, friend. If by some freak accident one of your prospectors or ore collectors is destroyed, you can always build another from your ore refineries. Just select the ore refinery and you'll see it can build another resource vehicle as its special ability. As long as your ore refinery is close to a mine, you only need one vehicle gathering from it. So don't waste credits making more of those little tykes than you need. I always wonder though, how come the mightiest nations in the world need to collect ore while killing each other? I mean, what is even in that stuff? Ow! Don't ask ridiculous questions! Ore is the primary resource in Red Alert 3. Refinery is automatically converted to credits, which is the currency used to purchase all units and structures. Ore mines have a finite amount of resources that will eventually slow to trickle. So, if you deplete an ore mine, it's best to try and expand to another in order to maintain a steady income. You now have power and an economy set up. You're ready to start training units for the fight. From your production tab, go ahead and build a boot camp. Remember to place it down by selecting its icon, then left-clicking on open terrain. Incidentally, you can rotate the face of a structure you're about to plop down by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse around. Let go of the button when ready. Now that you have a boot camp, you're able to train some infantry. To do this, you may select either your boot camp or the infantry tab under your radar. This will bring up the available units you're able to train. Let's train some so-called peacekeepers. Select the peacekeeper button to start training one. You may queue up multiple peacekeepers by continuing to select on his portrait. Try holding the shift key to queue up five of those blokes at a time. You can also halt the production of units or structures by right-clicking on a production button. Right-clicking a second time will cancel production and refund any credits that were spent. Left-clicking on a paused production process will resume production. You can set a different rally point for them by selecting the structure and right-clicking some other place. All three factions produce units in the same way, from the respective tabs in the sidebar. By the by, Many of your structures aren't restricted to being built on land. You can set them up on water as well. If you build another power plant, try placing it out in the drink. It doesn't cost you any extra, and most ground units won't be able to get to it that way. Observe, however, that allied structures may only be built in the radius surrounding the construction yard. You may expand your build radius by creating command hubs 
which convert from your prospectors. Please select your prospector and use its special ability to unpack it somewhere. Across the water, perhaps. Go ahead, Commander. Golly, look at all that water. Well, all right. Yes, sir. -y. That's a great idea. I didn't think of that. It's a beautiful day. What a great idea. Yes, sir. -y. I like the beach. Sounds good to me. Well, all right. Yes, sir. -y. What a great idea. That's a great idea. Objective complete. Yeah, that's it. Also, bear in mind that the Allies' technology level is local to their construction yards or command hubs. That means not all your production structures on the battlefield may offer you the same construction options. You can upgrade your construction yard or your command hub by clicking the Heighten Clearance button with one of these structures selected. Try requesting Heightened Clearance on both your Conyard and your Command Hub now. That's it. Now the other. Construction options. Upgrade complete. Objective complete. There it is. Heightened clearance costs you, and there's an even higher clearance level available after that. You need to decide when and where to request better tech when commanding the Allies, else things may turn rotten. Yes. Also, should you ever have need to run away like a little girl, you may pack up your conyard, then unpack it on the water. The boot camp and armor facility are the only Allied structures you may not place on the water. Your seaport, on the other hand, is the only structure you may not build on land. Ow! What was that for? Silence! Surely the commander wants to move on to the other factions by now. Feel free to continue dabbling with the allies, then select me when you are ready to continue. Need someone to take a look around? Inspector on duty.
armor spots. Securing building. Tactical unit. This monstrosity is the Soviet construction yard. You will see that the Soviets build differently from the Allies. Select the construction yard or the production tab, then select the reactor button. Now place the reactor on open terrain as you did with the Allied structures. Do not wait for the reactor to build in the queue, for you would wait forever. Unlike the Allies, the Soviets carelessly build their structures out on the battlefield. Notice how the structure is hastily being thrown together in the field. While it's building up, it's vulnerable to enemy attack. So be cautious when placing your structures. All Soviet structures build up in this way. Just like the Allies, however, you can pause and cancel a structure's buildup by right-clicking on its button. And of course, your Soviet structures may be placed at sea, with the exceptions of the barracks and war factory. Uh, oi, aren't you forgetting something? Yet. At least, not anymore. Commander, one truly unique Soviet structure you should be aware of is the Crusher Crane. Try building one now from your production structures queue. Crusher cranes work much like construction yards. So now, you can build two structures at once from your two separate build queues. What's more, your crane's repair drones will automatically repair nearby vehicles. Or you can order these vehicles into its grinders to crush them for a quick refund. To access your newly added build queues, select the buttons added to the sidebar. Or click the tabs in the sidebar to cycle between queues. You can build multiple production structures to gain more build queues, allowing you to build more stuff at once. Of course, you'll need plenty of income to support this. Now, please feel free to continue exploring the richness of the Soviet build system. When you're done, please select the tsunami tank to proceed. Objective complete. Building. Building. Building in progress. Construction complete. New construction Ready for the options. Collection. Building. Construction complete. Construction complete. Construction complete. Ready Building. for the collection. Building. Construction complete. Building. Construction complete. Construction complete. Cancelled. Building. Building. Construction complete. New construction options. Building. Construction complete. New construction options. Construction complete. New construction options. Building. Construction complete. New construction options. Building. 
building. Construction complete. New construction options. Building. Building. Mid, ready to rule the skies. Headquarters, the sky is ours. Under control. Mid, ready to rule the sky. Construction complete. MIG, construction ready to complete. rule the sky. New construction options. MIG, ready to rule the sky. Building. Building. Training. Conscript training finished. Show me what to do. Conscript training finished. I go. Conscript training finished. Conscript training finished. Continue, Commander, for this will be worth it. The Empire of the Rising Sun has the most unique build system in that our structures are all created from special units called nanocores. Cores may unfurl at the location of your choosing, much like an MCV unpacks into a construction yard. However, unfurled Imperial structures cannot pack back up. Go into your production structures queue and build a generator core. The generator core will be yours to control as soon as it emerges from your construction yard. If you select it, you may give it move commands around the map like any unit. To unfurl it into an instant generator while having it selected, use its unfurled special ability, much like you did with the MCV earlier in this lesson. You should now have a ghosted image of the instant generator attached to your cursor. Select a spot on open terrain to make your generator core unfurl at that location. All nano core are amphibious, so they can cross land as well as water. This means the Empire of the Rising Sun can spread its borders far and wide. The Imperial Docks is the only structure that cannot unfurl on land, while the Mecha Bay and Instant Dojo cannot unfurl at sea. One last thing about Imperial production structures. They must be upgraded individually to unlock new construction options. You'll find these upgrades in their build queues. Now, Commander, do you see how superior our production capability is compared with that of my barbaric friends here? I still think ours is better. Oh, no. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Keep fussing with the Imperial build system if you want. And when you're all set, select me and we'll wrap up. Right. Building. Fast forward. Refinery core ready. Site designated. Building. Refinery core ready. 
Construction complete. New construction options. Training. My bow is yours. A clear path. Rain down upon them. Complete. My bow New is construction yours. Options. Forward. An all run is nearing depletion. I serve the Emperor. Construction complete. I'll collect the goods. Building. I serve the Emperor. Construction options. Construction complete. Building. New construction options. Upgrade Generator complete. Ready. Generator ready. Transporting. Revision sent. Unpacking location sent. Defender core. Construction complete. New construction options. Transport core unpacked. Building. Defender core ready. Construction complete. New construction Defender options. Site dedicated. Building. Defender core ready. Building. Defender An core. ore mine has been depleted. Contact location set. Generator core Construction ready. complete. Generator core. Upgrade complete. New Defender construction core. options. On hold. Cancelled. Building. Construction complete. Yes? Advance. Cut through armor. Construction complete. Construction complete. No one stands in my way. We will defend the way. Warriors! Ready. On alert! Very well. Archer, ready for battle. Imperial warrior, ready. Upgrade complete. New construction options. My blade hungers. I'll be ready. I'll save my Upgrade strength. Upgrade complete. New Watch construction options. To kill. I'll be ready. Will this be very long? Building. Training. Rocket Angel suited up. Who has awakened me? Rocket Angel suited up. Simple. Upgrade complete. New construction options. Do not test me. What's there? Is that all? What's there? Hmm. And are you my friend? friend? My name is Yuriko. <laughs> They'll all pay. All fired up. Flying full throttle. Boosters on. Disengaging lock. What is it? Is that all? Well, that 
concludes the lesson on base building. Don't worry, the other ones will be shorter. Mostly. Let's shove off, lads. Commander, see you then. Ow! Oh. Mission accomplished. Why hello again, Commander. In this lesson, you're gonna get acquainted with your units and some of the abilities that make them unique. Every unit in Red Alert 3 has some sort of special ability, in addition to its primary ability. The majority of your unit's primary abilities is to attack their targets. A unit's special ability may put a nasty status effect on an enemy, switch to an alternate weapon, or even transform into an entirely different unit. Let us go over how to use special abilities now. Select that allied cryocopter, if you please. The cryocopter's special ability is the Shrink Beam. With the cryocopter selected, left-click on its special ability button in the bottom right of your screen, or press the F key. Notice that the Shrink Beam is a targeted special ability, which means you have to left-click on a target to use it. Other types of special abilities take effect as soon as you press the ability button. Now then, use the Shrink Beam on my good friend the Soviet Hammer Tank. Wait, what? No way, not me again! Let's ah, melting! As stated earlier, not all special abilities need to be targeted like the cryocopter's shrink beam. Some abilities cause units to switch weapon modes. Blimey, that tank looks like he's lost control, and all you've got is an allied hydrofoil. Its primary weapon is an anti-air cannon that won't do you any good here. However, if you use its special ability, It'll switch from its gun to the weapon jammer. Select the hydrofoil now and ready the weapon jammer by left-clicking on its special ability button or hitting the F key. That's proper. Now, have your hydrofoil fire on that Soviet apocalypse tank on the shore. Scrambled in ah, so much for that tea party. As you can see, the apocalypse tank can no longer fire. Not so scary now, is he? So remember, even the toughest enemy units may be vulnerable to your lesser unit's special abilities. Learn them all, and never give up. If you've finished with your motivational speech, perhaps we can continue? Commander, let's go over a unit whose special ability is to transform. One basic example is the MCV, though let us take a look at a more exciting case in one of the Empire of the Rising Sun's versatile Mecha Tengu units. The Mecha Tengu is an amphibious, hovering anti-infantry unit that can transform into the Jet Tengu, a flying air superiority fighter. Not only does the transform ability affect how it navigates the battlefield, it also means the unit changes from having anti-ground weapons to anti-air weapons. Select the Mecha Tengu and use its special ability. Cruise it! Impressive, no? Now. Order your jet tango to destroy that miserable cryocopter. Oh, and don't worry, it is merely a training robot carefully disguised to look like a real vehicle. No robots are gonna get past you, Commander. You should know there are some units at your disposal whose primary ability either isn't a weapon at all, or will change depending on what you tell it to attack. For example, each faction has its own type of engineer unit, like this swarthy fellow over here. Engineers are special units that can capture any enemy structure or neutral tech structure. Much like with moving or attacking, you can select your engineer and right-click on a capturable structure. That'll make him go after it. Look, there seems to be an oil derrick you can capture out in the water. Oil derricks are neutral tech structures that provide additional income. Go get it. Off he goes. Note that engineers are amphibious, so they automatically switch to a keen aquatic form when they get to water. Not all units are amphibious, of course. Notice you can issue capture commands into the fog of war, assuming the structure is still there when you get to it. Hey, where did that engineer go anyway? Ow! He went into destruction, you fool. 
and there he shall remain forever. For that is the way of the engineer. You may have noticed that when you highlighted that enemy structure with your engineer selected, your cursor changed to a garrison cursor. That garrison cursor indicates a structure you can enter. Your basic infantry can't garrison enemy structures or neutral tech structures like the engineer can, but they can garrison civilian structures such as hotels and houses. Fear not. For civilians have long since abandoned such structures once they heard we were coming. When infantry garrison these structures, they receive extra protection, as the building they're in will take damage instead of the units themselves, should they come under fire. Garrisoning your units into civilian structures is a good tactic, both from an offensive and a defensive perspective. It helps to secure locations, force enemies to take an alternate path, or give your units more cover near to your base should the enemy send a force to destroy you. Now garrison that nearby structure by issuing a move order onto it whilst having some peacekeepers selected. Good, they're in. And here comes trouble. As you can see, those enemy training robots fired upon the structure rather than directly at your peacekeepers. Watch out, though, because each faction has ways of clearing out garrison structures. The Allies and Empire can try rushing their peacekeepers or Imperial warriors into a garrison structure, while the Soviet conscripts can use their Molotov cocktails. Of course, you could just blow the structures up if you cannot be bothered by such details. Now, let's say you need to get your peacekeepers out of the structure. Just select the structure and use the evacuate command. Just like using a special ability on a unit. Do this now. Standing by. Some of your units can also be garrisoned by your infantry. The multi-gunner IFV is a unique allied vehicle whose weapon takes on the characteristics of whichever infantry unit hops inside. Order one of your peacekeepers into that IFV and watch what happens. Ready for contact. Hey, mate. If I may, normally the IFV's weapon works best against aircraft. But once you garrisoned your peacekeeper into it, it changed into an anti-infantry weapon. Well, the IFV can only contain one infantry unit at a time. Other vehicles can hold more and can transport your infantry around the battlefield. For example, the Riptide ACV is admittedly a good transport for getting infantry quickly and safely from one point to another, although infantry cannot fire out of it. Garrison your remaining infantry into the Riptide now. Now that they're garrisoned, let's move your Riptide across this lake and over to the shore on the other side. Look for the marker on the radar. Cooking. Cool. Riptide here. Let's pull it up. Riptides are a special type of unit in that they're amphibious, meaning they can traverse both land and water. As my comrade said, not all units are amphibious, so it's good to make note of the ones that are. Some units behave differently on land and water. For instance, when your Riptide is on water, its torpedo tubes open to give it additional firepower. Now that you've made it to the other side, let's get those peacekeepers out. All transports have the not-so-special ability to evacuate their passengers. Use the evacuate ability now. Step right up. Finally, let us discuss contextual attacks. A contextual attack this is what you get when your cursor has changes to selecting attack other targets, than a normal depending attack Depending on the type of select target, the allied commander order who should attack so enemy very infantry, such as these lifelike robots, your cursor will be that of a normal attack cursor. However, when you highlight an enemy vehicle or structure, you get a demolition cursor. When ordered to demolish a target, Tanya will move very close to the target, set some charges, and blow it up. This is an example of a contextual attack. Go ahead and dispose of those forces using the commando. Other units, such as our allied spies like this one here, also have contextual attacks. Select the spy, then use his contextual attack on one of those enemy training dummies. <laughs> now who's the dummy, am I right? As you can see, the spy's primary ability is to disguise himself as the enemy. Alternatively, 
If you highlight an enemy structure, you can try to infiltrate it to disrupt the enemy's base. Infiltration has different effects depending on which type of structure is infiltrated. Experiment with all the possibilities. Incidentally, the Empire of the Rising Sun Shinobi unit may also infiltrate structures. Only the tactless Soviets lack an infiltrator. Oh, but why? Come on, lads, we have to get through this. Commander, that's the end of this lesson. See you in the next one. Mission accomplished. In this particular lesson, we're going to be covering top secret protocols and how to use them, as well as the threat meter and some other heavy stuff. To begin with, let's have a look at this here base. Let's say you're low on credits. If at any point you decide that you no longer want a structure that you've placed, you may sell it. To sell a structure, left click on the sell button under your radar, then left click on the structure you wish to sell. Right clicking cancels out of sell mode. Try selling one of those power plants now. It was a good power plant, but you can build another. Don't go crazy selling everything. What would your friends think if you failed a tutorial mission? Hey, quit it! Relax, friend. I was just about to explain to the commander here how to repair. It's pretty important. To repair a damaged structure, left click on the repair button under your radar. Then left click on your construction yard. Give it a go. You'll notice that the repair icon has appeared on your construction yard, indicating that it's undergoing repairs. Structures can only repair as long as you have sufficient funds. You may notice that as your structure is repairing, your credits are slowly trickling down. Now then, let's talk about top secret protocols. Top secret protocols is just a fancy term for special support powers you can use. These will affect the battlefield, your enemies, and your units and structures. Basically, they can get you out of a pinch. Keep in mind, you need your construction yard intact in order to use them. Each faction has its own set of protocols which can be offensive or defensive in nature. Sometimes both. As you progress through a battle, you gradually earn security points which you can use to access new protocols. Progress towards your next security point is indicated by the meter surrounding the top secret protocols button on your screen. The number in the button is your current number of security points. Now, let's go over how to access your protocols. Left click the top secret protocols button or press the tilde hotkey to the left of the one key to bring up a menu of all the dirty tricks you can use. As you can see, this menu has what, like 15 different protocols to choose from. The protocols are ranked by levels, so to access protocols further down the list, you need to access the ones above them first. As mentioned earlier, there are different types of protocols. There are offense-oriented protocols such as surgical strike, which can damage enemy forces. There are more tactical protocols such as chrono rift, which can protect your units or split enemy forces. And then there are upgrade protocols that provide passive bonuses, such as advanced aeronautics, which toughens up all those weak little allied aircraft. Unlike offensive and tactical protocols, upgrade protocols take effect immediately once acquired and do not need to be activated manually. Each protocol costs one security point. Now, go get surveillance sweep from your top secret protocols menu. Well, well, sir. Looks like you've been cleared to use surveillance sweep. What an occasion. All protocols available to you will appear on the left-hand side of your screen. To use Surveillance Sweep, first left-click on it. Now you need to select a target location for the sweep. This one's a little dodgy because you then have to select a second location to plot a trajectory. So, left-click once, then again someplace else in the area near the edge of the screen. Give it a go.
see that? Make sure to have a look at the notes written next to each protocol so you're aware of what you're signing up for before you pick one of these. By the way, the protocols available to you are determined solely by the faction you're commanding. So even if you pull a stunt like capturing an enemy conyard, doesn't mean their top brass will uh, open the kimono on their military secrets. Makes sense, yeah? Next, we'll talk about the threat meter, which gives you an impression of how much death and destruction is happening all around you in a given moment. The threat meter increases in battle, especially when you sustain heavy casualties. And the higher it is, the faster you earn new security points. Higher levels of threat also influence how quickly your units gain combat veterancy. The higher the threat, the faster your units will become great heroes from killing foes. Veteran units display a little chevron. They're better at killing enemies, and once they achieve heroic status, they automatically regenerate the boot. Watch how one of your units gains veterancy by mowing down droves of hostile targets. Heroic forces like these can make a huge difference, so best keep them around. Speaking of which, what sort of commotion over there? It appears you are under attack. Take advantage of your high threat meter and vet up your forces while using some of your top secret protocols to assist you. Fear not, for this is only a simulation involving lifelike robots. Oh, ho, 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 now it's on! Try to build up enough forces to stop your enemy's invasion, then take those units to the enemy's base and destroy it. Remember, you also have access to your top secret protocols to help you take down your enemy. Ow! Whatever. Figure it out for yourself then. Good and done. Right here. Jeff, right here. What's the next play? What's up, coach? That zone's mine. Jeff, right here. Multi gunner. Multi gunner. Jeff, gunner on service. Jeff, right here. I'm all ears. All right. Jeff, Let's right here. Tracks. What's the next play? Whatever you need. Multi gunner at your service. All right. Jeff, Jeff, right here. All right. I'm coach. all ears. Let's go then. Hey man, right here. Multi gunner at your service. That's all. Awesome. Multi gunner, Jeff, let's right here. Tracks. All right. Jeff, right here. Multi gunner at your service. Multi gunner at your service. What's the next play? I'm here for you. Multi gunner. Good as done. I'm here for you. Jeff, no one dead. Multi gunner. Multi gunner at 
dangerous out here. Repair, coming through. It's a little busy now. Stop link check. Guardian tank at your service. Guardian tank awaiting deployment. Can we be of help, sir? Keep the decks clear. Fire the EMP. There's the target. Go! I'm here for ya. Whatever you need, who wants a ride? How can I help? Set up the target array. Whatever you need, let's make tracks. Hit it, Jiffy. Sad link initialized. Orbit's online too, sir. No more pulse on, Gunner. Need a tick. Plant the foot, will ya? Base cannons online too, sir. Anything else I can do for you? Who wants a ride? Whatever you need. Hey, mate. Whatever you need. Oh, I, gotta... I have the tools. Engineering. Engineer on duty. I'm listening, sir. Peace of mind. Hey, mate. How are you? online too, sir. Begin sequence. Smashing work, Commander. You're now one step closer to becoming a serious threat out there. We're done with this lesson. See you in the next one, all right? Mission accomplished. Commander, in this particular lesson, we'll be going over some of the more advanced play mechanics that will separate the men from the boys. From earlier lessons, you should be aware of the Allied spy and some of his capabilities by now. Spies can disguise themselves as enemy units. Only scout units, the Allied attack dog, Soviet war bear, and Imperial burst drone can detect disguised enemy units. Spies and Imperial Shinobi can also infiltrate enemy structures. When you infiltrate a structure, it'll impair your enemy's base in various ways, which should give you the upper hand. For example, if you infiltrate that enemy reactor, the entire base will power down for a while. Go ahead and infiltrate the instant generator by right-clicking on it whilst your spy is selected. Undercover. I'll have a look around. Excellent, Commander. By infiltrating their generator, you've brought down their entire base's power, which in turn powered down their base defenses. That will certainly make it easier to destroy their base, stupid robots. Oh no! It appears the Empire of the Rising Sun is sending in a force to destroy your tanks. You'll need to retreat your tanks back to your base. A clever way of doing that is to reverse move them back to your base. This will allow them to continue attacking those enemy units while retreating to a safer location. To reverse move your units, select them and press the D key on your keyboard. Notice how your cursor changed. Right-click on the target destination near your construction yard to order your tanks to retreat. 
Another benefit of reverse moving is that it keeps a unit's stronger front armor facing the enemy. Most vehicles are more vulnerable from the rear and flanks. So when you retreat from enemies using a normal move command, you'll turn tail and take more damage. Reverse moving allows your unit's stronger front armor to take the brunt of the fire. Good job, sir. Your units made it back and were able to whittle down those enemy tanks health enough for your base defenses to finish them off. Had you issued a normal move order back to your base, your Guardian tanks might not have fared as well. Incidentally, should the enemy catch you off guard with an attack, listen for audio cues from your intel officer and visual cues on radar to tip you off. To jump to the most recent radar event, just hit the space bar. Enemy commando detected. Or to get back to your main base from anywhere in battle, tap the H key. Oh, pants. It looks like the Empire is sending another attack wave, but this time they've come at us with infantry. Your base defenses are strong against infantry, but with that many of the blighters, I don't think it's going to be enough. So, a good way to dispatch large quantities of infantry is to crush them with vehicles. Not all vehicles can crush infantry, so it's good to familiarize yourself with the ones that can. Small vehicles like your IFVs and Riptides are examples of vehicles that can't crush. On the other hand, larger vehicles like Guardian tanks and assault destroyers can crush a man like so many potato crisps. What's more, some of the largest vehicles in Red Alert 3 are big enough to crush other, smaller vehicles. Anyhow, let's crush those robots. Wait! You may wish to assign your tanks to a control group first. This is an important way of managing your forces. To assign units to a control group, select them, then hold the control key and press a number key. Do this now, please. What's it gonna be? Good. You may now select those units at any time by pressing the corresponding number key. You can also jump to the group by double tapping the key. Now please proceed with crushing my robots. Thought you'd never ask. To crush enemy infantry, select your guardian tanks and issue a move order behind the enemy infantry. You can also issue a force move command using the G hotkey or using the advanced commands tab near the bottom of the screen. Issue a move command to the designated location with your tanks now. Approaching area. <sighs> Seeing as how that rising sun base seems intent on taking us down, Let's go over some ways to get your units to protect your base without being drawn out by the enemy. All of your units can be set to different stances, which affect their behavior. All units start off in guard stance, meaning they will auto-acquire enemies that come within their attack range and pursue them for a short distance if they try to flee. Once the dust settles, your units will return to their original positions. We need to have some of our units on defense for our base, but not pursue our enemies. To do this, we need to put them into hold ground stance. First, select one or more of your tanks. Now click on the advanced commands panel in the bottom right of your screen next to the unit portrait. As you can see, this panel reveals some additional controls for your units. Select the hold ground button to change your unit stance. Simple as that, you've just changed your unit's stance. Keep in mind that no matter what stance your units are in, any orders you issue will always be followed. Stances will only affect how units behave when not under your direct control. Now, take three Guardian tanks, not counting our field instructor, and move one to each of the designated locations and put them into a hold ground stance. Guardian tank, good to go. Guardian tank, at your service. Capital. What can we do for you, sir? We'll be on our best behavior. What's on the agenda? Guardian tank. Good Perfect. What say we also set up some base defenses? Each faction has a couple of its own base defenses. The Allies have multi-gunner turrets, for example. Select the support structures tab in the sidebar, build a multi-gunner turret, and place it near your tanks.
Multi-gunner turrets change weapons if you put different infantry into them. Though the rocket launchers they use by default should be handy in most cases. You can also build walls from your support structure's queue. To do so, build and place one wall segment. Then build and place another along the same row as the first. You'll see the build grid show green to indicate where you can form a solid wall. Careful though. Each wall segment costs you, so longer walls are more expensive. Walls are useful for blocking smaller forces like those pesky engineers, always trying to steal your structures. Go on and try building a solid wall at the front of your base. Capital! Now if the Rising Sun attacks, we'll have some extra defenses waiting for them that they won't be able to draw away from our base. And here they come. As you can see, they've decided to retreat back to base, but your Guardian tanks stood their ground and didn't continue after them. Had your Guardian tanks followed them back, they most likely would have been destroyed by the Empire's own base defenses. Yes, the Empire's base defenses are quite impressive. You may need to use combined arms to defeat them. In fact, if you depend overmuch on just one or two types of units, you are bound to fail. Thankfully, it is easy to manage multiple types of units at once. Try selecting all your combat forces on the battlefield using the Q key. What Good. You Notice you have multiple unit types in the contextual tab in your sidebar at right. One type of unit in your group will always be selected. To cycle between unit types, simply tap the tab hotkey. Try this now. Switching unit types in this fashion makes it easier to use your mixed group special abilities without deselecting the group. We should also briefly touch on waypoint mode for its useful. Waypoint mode lets you queue up move or attack orders. To use waypoint mode, hold the alt key while issuing move or attack orders as normal with units selected. Your units will complete the orders in sequence. Camouflage, standing by. Nearest tank, operational. Camouflage, standing by. Now, earlier we had mentioned how directional armor comes into play during battles. Another type of armor bonus your units can receive comes from an automatic reaction to enemy fire called suppression. Suppression only affects infantry units. When infantry units become suppressed, they go prone on the ground and continue firing. Suppressed infantry are slower, but more resistant to damage. Send your infantry into that city square there and attack that garrison structure. I'm ready. Go, go! As you approached the structure, your units came under enemy fire, and some of them were suppressed as a result of the enemy attacks. Due to this suppressed position, your units could absorb more damage and in turn deal more damage to that enemy structure, allowing them to destroy it. Ow! Oh, what was that for? That was for my robots. Well, good job, Commander. You now know some of the advanced tactics that'll surely make you a worthy adversary on the battlefield. Now get out there and knock some heads together. Go on, what are you waiting for? A fancy ending with a sappy montage? As for you, boys, the truce is off! Finally, you jerks! Shut up! Mission accomplished. After years of conflict, the free nations of the world were finally about to defeat the USSR. To save themselves, the Soviet leaders came up with a desperate plan. They created an experimental time travel device and went back into the past to eliminate the one man most responsible for the Allies' technological superiority, Albert Einstein. 
can forever change the future. In this new timeline, the Soviets were the aggressors and the Allies were on the run. But in the process, they inadvertently spawned a third world power, the Empire of the Rising Sun. Led by the Emperor Yoshiro, they believed that they were destined to conquer the world. The Empire struck without warning. Luckily, we weren't caught totally unawares. We rallied our troops and marshaled our forces. We proved victorious. There you are. Battle control is finally online and everything is in place. We've acquired the construction vehicles from the three world powers and they're now ready for your disposal. The post-war situation is so bogged down in border disputes that no one will even see you coming. We'll be standing by to collect the technology of the wreckage left behind so that soon we'll have samples of all their military assets to do with as we please, or as you please. Good luck out there. We'll be monitoring your progress with great interest. Well, that's a good question, thank you. With the Soviet Union's government dismantled, we can now share the benefits of the free market with those who have been excluded. The Allied occupation forces are only there to ease this transition. <laughs> I mean, there has been rumors of a possible resistance, but so far, I'm glad to say, we haven't seen anything of the sort. The Russian people have welcomed us with open arms. They've denounced their former leaders and have embraced liberty and opportunity. Commander, these are dark times, are they not? We are very grateful that you have joined our cause. The people need leadership if they are to rise against the Allied oppressors. Our resistance movement is well underway, but we have a problem. Our scientists, who are instrumental to our new weapons development, have mysteriously gone missing. Our scouts have discovered suspicious research facility protected by Allied forces. We must search there for any clues regarding the whereabouts of our scientists. You'll be granted only a small force. It is all we can spare. Find out as much as you can, comrade. Udachi. Tonight, for our special report, Brenda Snow is here with an exclusive on the powerful and elusive Eureka Omega. Brenda? Thanks, Ted. By now, you may have heard the stories of Yuriko Omega, the mysterious Japanese girl with the terrifying psionic powers. During the war, Allied soldiers claimed that she decimated entire combat battalions using only her mind. Who is this young girl? Where did she come from? And how did she develop these fearsome and fantastic abilities? Yuriko's history is somewhat murky. Some sources say that her real name is Yuriko Matsui, and that Omega is simply a code name used by the military. According to these same sources, she was born in the small coastal town of Tanabe and exhibited paranormal powers from the time she was very young. There are indications that she was scorned by her schoolmates because of her unique abilities. When the government learned of these talents, she was taken away to the Shiro Psychic Research Center run by this man, Dr. Shinji Shimada. He's widely known for his advances in the area of psionic research. What did the scientists at the Shiro Research Center do to this confused, lonely little girl? 
We may never know exactly, but whatever it was, she was never the same again.